Kate Schmidt, former world record holder in the javelin. And today on Future Sport, we're going to be discussing a very controversial subject. Welcome to Coda de Casa and Future Sport, where science and sport are interfaced to help superstars and hopeful athletes like you and me achieve maximum performance levels. Dr. Gideon Ariel, world famous biomechanist, heads the Coda Research Center. He utilizes sophisticated computer technology to resolve the mystery of sport. Athletes from every corner of the world visit the center to improve their skills as they vie for major championships. On today's show, former world record holder in the javelin, Kate Schmidt. She'll be discussing drugs, their effect upon athletes. And we'll travel to Hawaii to watch Scott Tenley win the grueling Ironman competition, where they swim for 2.4 miles, ride a bicycle 112 miles, and then run 26 miles. He'll be with us today. And we'll visit with Dr. Gideon Ariel and his sports equipment designed for the 21st century, all today on Future Sports. the first intelligent computerized exercise machine and the inventor, Dr. Gideon Ariel. You ready for some more interesting points on sports? Let's check in with the Ariel View. Well, Vic, this is the old exercise equipment. This is before the time of computers. These machines do not have in intelligence on them. They depend on gravity only. And let me tell you what I mean by that. If I try to lift in the sitting press 150 pounds, let's look what happened. It's easy in the beginning, and I get stuck here. I cannot do it anymore. I have to put it back. Why? The reason is that the, my arm reached certain angle which is biomechanically inefficient. Everybody knows that it's harder to keep weight on the side than to keep it close to the body. So I'm getting farther from the body and I get stuck because of a mechanical reason. The machine does not. The machine does not have a brain. Now let's put 100 pounds here and see what happened with 100 pounds. When I'm lifting 100 pounds, it's too easy in the beginning, hard in the middle, and too easy in the end. In fact, if I'm doing it fast enough, it flies. It has zero weight in the end because the machine is dumb. Now let's go and see the 21st century machine, the computerized exercise machine. This is the 21st century machine. This is the computerized machine of the future athletes. The future athletes will select their number here on the machine, will select the proper program, and from this program will try to do what they're doing the best. Well, I'll select the sitting press, the same exercise that I did yet there. The computer allow me to select all kind of variable. In this case, I will select the variable velocity. Try to simulate a shot putter. In my first repetition, this will simulate the actual shot put routine. And I push as hard as I can, all the way I did 124 pounds. And the second repetition, let's see, 110 pounds. And the third repetition, it accelerate like the shot, 112. Now I will look on my force curve and see where my deficiency is. Let's understand the full scale. These are the angle here. That's when I extend my arm, it's going up, and then when I pull my arm down, it's going down. That's five degrees, 10 degrees, 15 degrees. 
Here is the force, 40 pounds, 84, 80 pounds, 120 pounds. Look what happened in the beginning when I start to extend my elbow, I'm getting to 120 pounds, I keep to 140 and maybe 150 in the end. On the way down in this case, it's not so important. I have a deficiency and the reason is that I cannot accelerate the bar to about 240 pounds, 250 pounds that guys like Brian Oldfield can do. This is the intelligent machine of the future. All my information that you see here going to be stored in the computer, never being forgotten, always compare me to the best in the world and to myself. This machine, which has a computer in it, will allow future sport athletes to tune their practice perfectly for their own condition and achieve optimally. Thanks, Gideon. Now it's time for a running tip from our running advisor, 1972 gold medal winner, Frank Shorter. Nick, today's running tip is for those athletes who've been exercising, been on a program for a while, and have decided they want to enter a race. The question is, what do you do that's different? Nothing, really. You might back off in the amount of running you're doing for two or three days before a race. But before the race, it's very important to warm up. You might jog a mile very slowly, do some stretching, jog a little bit more, two or three minutes, end your warm up about five minutes before the gun is supposed to go off. Then, when the gun does go off, start out at a pace that you think you can finish that distance and back off, slow down. You'll be very glad you did because at this point, you probably don't have a sense of pace. A good thing to remember is that if you can still carry on a conversation while you're running, you're running at a nice level of equilibrium and you have a very good chance of finishing that race. So for your first race, maybe pick someone who's going the same pace and see if you can talk to them the whole way. If you can, you'll most likely finish. If you can't, you better slow down. With us now, former world record holder in the Javelin, 1977 through 79, Kate Schmidt. Tickle to death to have you here, Kate. Well, and also, we have the resident genius computer scientist, Dr. Gideon Ariel. I, can, I, can I ask Gideon a question? Go. Do, do you think that the women can throw a javelin further if it weighs more? Because I think our javelins are too light. Yeah, in fact, that's one of the critical things. If you give, for example, uh, um, the men shot putters a lighter shot, like let's say eight pounds, you will not be able to throw it, oh. if it with the same technique. So lighter javelin, not necessarily helping to throw farther. Uh -uh. And it could be that if you add 50 or 100 grams to your javelin, it will go even farther. And people don't understand it, but that's the real truth. Do you think that the Federation's about to, to sanction a change like that because the stadiums are getting smaller and smaller because uh, as far as the javelin? Well, at some point, they will have to do something because now you know the world record with the men is 315 feet. And mm -hmm. pretty soon, you'll not have any room in the stadium right. to throw the javelin, so they will have to do something about it. Kate, you say that you're not too scientific, but I'm not so sure I buy off on all of that because I've heard some pretty strong opinions coming out of you as to what's happening with drugs in our society and with, with athletes and especially. And I think we have an obligation on future sport to discuss those a little bit. I made a comment, I think it was before it was before one of the Olympics, probably Montreal, that in following Olympic games the team or the country with the best pharmacist was going to have the, the, the most gold medals. And it's turning out to be pretty true, I think. And there's, I think everybody understands about the, the use of steroids. Uh, most people are using steroids. There's more knowledge about them. They, they still say on the prescriptions that the use of anabolic steroids does not enhance athletic performance. But if that was true, then why is the, uh, all of Eastern Europe using them, most of the West? Uh, there's, there's a great abundance of steroid usage. But there's another thing happening right now that's um, involving the use of what's called somatropin, the human growth hormone. This really bothers me because this is growth, the entire bo adult body growing when it shouldn't be. This drug is used for dwarfism in children. Uh, there's not a lot known about this. Some of your organs can grow, your heart can grow, and if it makes a wrong, one of your ventricles makes a wrong turn, you can shut off the major supply of blood, things like that. There's not enough known about it and people are abusing it. So it's something that needs to be looked at um, and controlled partially. You're never going to get drugs out of sport, but it, we need to be educated about their use. Vic, you know, one of the most dangerous thing in future sport is the drug scene. Because I'm working with some athletes that they don't say anymore, let's see who is better, me or the Russian. They say, let's see who is better, my steroids or his steroids. 
So as Kate said, I mean, it starts to become a pharmaceutical Olympics. It's a chemical warfare. However, what are the solutions? Are we coming to the end? Well, I don't think so, because we show in future sports that with high technology, with computers, with biomechanics, and with other sciences, maybe we can replace steroids with other technologies so people will not have to take it. Because we're talking about anabolic steroids. We talk about growth hormone. I hear, I hear now horror stories where people start taking from a pituitary gland hormones and their face starts changing. I mean, some people took it from a monkey's pituitary glands and they start getting characteristics of a monkey. I mean, there is no end to that. Well, Gideon and Kate, it is time, I guess, for action. Let's hope that the scientific community can place all their interest in solving the drug problem while enhancing the normal performance of the human brain. You know, you can't keep good athletes around forever. This guy's got a lot of stories to tell us, but unfortunately, our time is up. So, Scott, great having you with Thank us, you. buddy. I hope you'll come back and join us. Okay, great. Anyway, we sent the car for you. Be here any second. Well, Vic, I won't need a car. I'm going to ride my bike home. It's, I need a little exercise. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> we'll see you now. This, this guy lives in San Diego. From Coda de Casa to San Diego is about 75 miles. And that really brings us to the end of the road of this edition of Future Sport. I'm Big Braden for Getting Aerial, saying see you next time. Our executive producer of Future Sport is Jim Millman. Produced by Jim Cross.